What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a deck that I haven't done here on the channel in a while and that's Grand Maju. Now Grand Maju is kind of like an anti-meta deck in today's format especially with Kostra running around but we'll dive into that when we start with the deck profile. If you guys do enjoy these deck profiles make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel but we do a full 10 videos per week, five long videos, five short videos, you guys are gonna get a little bit of everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And with that, let's get right into the deck profile. So just before we start today's video, I do wanna say that this deck is built to be a go second OTK deck. And it's kind of anti-meta in a sense where it's built to be any meta deck and break any meta board in today's format, right? Of course, one of the main ways you can win games is with the boy himself, Grand Maju, but there are actually other ways that you can win games in this deck, which is absolutely insane. So let's get right into it. Of course, we're starting off with three Grand Maju that Isa, the main card of this deck, especially with today's format, Koshter is just banishing a lot of cards anyway. This card can actually get pretty beefy, but this deck itself is also going to be able to banish a ton of cards. So this way you can make this card your boss monster and you can just normal summon it and then go for the OTK, which is absolutely insane. So of course we're playing three, we're playing three Deep Sea Diva, which honestly, if you don't have enough to OTK with the Grand Maju, Deep Sea is your best normal summon. This card gives you access to level 10 synchros, which is absolutely insane. It gives you access to a ranked two which ends up getting you to zeus if you end up not otking so deep sea diva is just an insane card so that's why we have to be playing three of and that's essentially it for the normal summons the three grand maju the three deep seas we're just maxing out on these because we want to see one or the other if we're seeing one or the other that's essentially how we're going to be winning the game right deep sea is going to give you access to a card in the extra deck essentially that acts as a grand maju especially in a deck like this one and that's cheng yang cheng yang gets so beefy because it gains 100 attack for each banished card right so this can get pretty beefy on its own so if you don't have access to the Grand Maju, Diva gives you access to the Cheng Yang, which is kind of like an extra deck version of Grand Maju, which is really, really powerful. Then for the dangers, of course, we're playing three Danger Bigfoot as well as three Danger Thunderbird. The reason for that is because these are level eight. Oh, by the way, like I mentioned earlier, you can get into rank 10 synchros. The reason you can get into rank 10 synchros is because a lot of the other monsters you guys are going to be seeing in this deck are essentially going to be all level eight, and they're going to be able to get you the level eight body that you need with the Diva to get into a level 10 synchro or to get into a rank eight monster, which is really nice right thunderbird and bigfoot also have really powerful effects bigfoot if it's discarded can pop a face-up card your opponent controls and thunderbird if it's discarded can destroy any set card your opponent controls so these cards really are nice because going second they are kind of a form of removal for you especially with cards like trade in the deck which can discard these cards and then you're going to get the most of their effects right so bigfoot thunderbird the main ones you need to be playing and we're playing a ton of kaijus because again we are wanting to go second and we are wanting to break boards one of the best ways to do it is kaijus especially in today's format with a rise heart and shangri-la so we're playing three gamma seal three Godarla, as well as one dogaran these are just all level eight kaijus which obviously synergize with trade in synergize with the deep sea diva because if you end up opening two kaijus you kaiju your opponent you summon your own kaiju and then you're going to be able to use the diva plus your kaiju to make a level 10 synchro which is really powerful so we're playing all the level eight kaijus over here they also synergize pretty well because they can technically help make rank eight monsters so that happens sometimes as well then we're playing three eater of millions which is a very powerful card it gives you access to something like anima from your extra deck and anima is an insanely powerful card especially when you're playing it with something like a kaiju because you can kaiju your opponent put it in the extra monster zone just above where the anima would be summon your eater of millions make an anima and then you can take back the kaiju and now anima comes a big beater for you which is really powerful so i still really like three eater of millions also it is banished fodder for your grand maju it's also banished fodder for your chen ying so it helps you end up getting to your win condition as well and then lastly we're playing three gizmek orochi this card is another level eight extender for you so both millions and gizmek are both extenders because they special themselves out to the field gizmek obviously also helps you banish cards which which means now you have more fodder for the Grand Maju for the Cheng Ying. Do you guys kind of see how this deck kind of works? All of it is so that it can banish cards, both that you control as well as cards that your opponent controls because something like Eater, when it attacks, can banish a card your opponent controls, essentially making it so that your Cheng Ying can get bigger or your Grand Maju can get bigger because you're going to be banishing a lot of your own cards as well with the Gizmek, which is really nice, right? So also keep in mind, because it's a level eight, I should have mentioned this, you can make Deep Sea Diva and this into a level 10, which is really nice. So these cards all essentially 
really synergize with the deck very very well and that's it for the monster count you guys can see it's just a bunch of monsters to help you go second and a bunch of monsters that help you make level 10 synchros or rank 8 monsters which is really powerful then for the spell cards we are playing two potted desires makes so much sense in this deck doesn't it draw two is very nice Banish 9 is also really nice in this deck. So it's just one of the best decks that can actually utilize Pot of Desires to its fullest potential. And then we're playing 3 Trade-In. Trade-In, of course, being able to get rid of your dangers to get their effects off is really nice. If you open too many Kaijus, you can trade in a Kaiju so that this way you can draw more cards. Being able to draw a ton of cards is really nice. Trading in a Gizmek is also very, very powerful. So again, it's just one of those things where it just helps the consistency of this deck. And having 5 draw cards, essentially, that are always going to be live is insane in this deck, right? So 3 Trade-In, 2 Pot of Desires, I really like these ratios. Then we're playing one change of heart and three triple tactics talent. These cards are really powerful for multiple reasons. One with change of heart and I guess TTT, depending on which effect you use, is really nice because it does help you break your opponent's boards. Being able to change a heart and take one of your opponent's monsters, use it as link fodder if you need. If it happens to be a level eight monster, you can use it with D.Va. You can use it for a rank eight. There's just so many different things you can do with something like change of heart. And same thing with TTT. It's one draw power if you need it to be draw power, which is really nice. But two, being able to also kind of change a heart from your opponent as well keep in mind there's times where you can open like change a heart plus a ttt which is absolutely insane by the way but these cards are just really really powerful in their own senses ttt we all know how good this is in today's format we're playing one monster reborn i actually really like playing the monster reborn because it helps you kind of otk sometimes when you're just missing a little bit of damage but also if your grand maju somehow ends up in the graveyard you can go back to your side of the field which is really really nice it also helps you get back some of your bigger bodies or your diva which is also really powerful so that's why i really like monster reborn three interrupted kaiju slumber slumber is obviously a very powerful board breaker in today's format and being able to get to your kaijus is really nice again putting a level eight body on your side of the field is really important so that's why i really like playing these seven kaijus because you're playing three names but you're playing like the two weaker ones and then of course you're playing one bigger one a lot of the time this is the one you're going to be putting on your side of the field so if you're not using it for a rank eight or a level 10 synchro it's just a really big body for you as well right so three slumber of course is very powerful then we're playing the one harpy's feather duster and lastly the one called by the grave right so these are very typical stuff that you guys are going to find in a lot of deck profiles especially with something like this ash is really prevalent and you know sometimes using a trade in and getting hit by an ash can be pretty bad i mean sometimes it's not bad because you can trade in and then you know you're trading in a gizmak or you're trading in a bigfoot so you're going to be getting value anyways but it does suck when you trade in like a kaiju and then you get hit with an ash and you don't really get that value right so that's why i like playing the one called by the grave another thing i want to talk about slumber as well that i didn't mention is when it's in your graveyard you can banish it to search a kaiju so it does provide you with a little bit of follow-up even if you end up not otking your opponent in one turn you do end up having a follow-up with this card which is really nice so that's it for the main deck it's a 40 card main deck very very standard i would say i mean maybe not standard i don't think people would be playing seven kaijus like i am but i really like the idea of seven kaijus i also like the idea of all this draw power as well so i really really like this build i think it's very very powerful moving on to the extra deck here we are playing of course one baron as well as one chenying the two best level 10 synchros in the game honestly and chenying just works so well with this deck so i really like playing this card we're playing the one sky calvary centuria this is a card that you can sometimes make with your deep sea diva which is really nice and essentially this gives you zeus fodder especially with a kaiju if you do kaiju your opponent make a centuria attack over the kaiju it puts a kaiju back in your hand which means you can then use it again so not only have you just reset a kaiju that you may have used but you've also been able to make the zeus now over the centuria because he's attacked which is really nice then we're playing a couple otk packages here we're playing the draglubion the number 100 numeron as well as the number 38 this is of course just one really powerful otk package another otk package over here is your pain gainer and your seven sins these cards are really nice to help you otk as well one dingirsu dingirsu just outs a lot of cards that you know you may not have an out two cards and maybe that can't be targeted dingirsu does that for you the zeus of course is going to be very powerful especially with all of these cards so we're of course playing the one zeus i'm not going to play two zeus because i know a lot of the people will like to say like play two zeus because against kashtara your opponent's going to rip out the one zeus if they see the one zeus i want that to be honest with you i want that if they're ripping out cards from my extra deck i'd rather than rip out a card like a zeus than rip out a card like a chengi or a baron or rip out some other cards right so if they're really scared of the zeus and they rip this out please that's the best thing you can do for me right because it gives me access to all my other extra deck cards and then we're playing the one animal like i mentioned which is really nice this is also another target a lot of the time that kashtora players will try to rip out but this card of course is really powerful with your eater of millions one nightmare phoenix one dark one unicorn as well as one access code talker these are just some generic link monsters that you can play especially that are really good with triple attack as well as change of heart so i think these cards are all really powerful dark is seeing a little bit less play in today's format but it can come up a lot of time against the branded builds or against the bestial builds which is really nice so dark can come up it's still just a generic link too which is really nice right so that's it for the extra deck lastly i wanted to show you guys a quick side deck that i put together now keep in 
mind your side deck is always going to be built based off of what your locals is if you're taking this to a locals or what you think the meta is going to be like at an event if you're going to a regionals but this is kind of like a pseudo side deck i put together it's not even completed it's only 12 cards it's not even a full 15 but again it's just something that you guys can use as a skeleton for your side decks so i like three shifter i'm not main decking the three shifter because it's not great into kashtara but it's good into a lot of other combo decks right so being able to side in the shifter going first or going second into a lot of decks is really really powerful we're playing three lightning storm of course to help you go second break a lot of backward decks which is really nice three mistake here and three d barrier so i wanted six cards and i think it's really important to be playing six cards when you have to go first because there are going to be times where your opponent's going to be like okay you go first and then you stuck with a bunch of go second cards like kaijus which don't do anything for you so that's why i really like having the option to go first and cards in the side deck to help you go first so mistake i think is very powerful in today's format cards cannot be added from either player's main deck to the hand except drawing them and if you look at this deck it doesn't really search at all so it's only really ever going to draw right so mistake is very very powerful especially into kashta i imagine they start off summoning a unicorn and then you flip a mistake they can't actually search and then they can't do a lot of their combos so mistake is very powerful it's also really good into sprite and other decks as well and d barrier of course is also really good into all these kind of decks right against kosh you can call ixies against brandon you can call fusion this card is obviously very powerful right so that's what i would say a quick skeleton for a side deck i kind of want to play three nibiru because we're playing already six cards here to go first shifter is really good going first or going second honestly right so this card is kind of both i would like to play three more cards to help me go second but you guys can choose between book of eclipse nibiru and other kind of go second board breaking cards right so again i'm going to leave that up to you guys i just really wanted to show you guys a quick skeleton for this side deck but that's it for the deck profile i hope you guys enjoyed and grand maju is one of those decks that i feel like a lot of people don't see coming lastly i want to say a big shout out to chair one of my good friends who kind of put me on this deck a long time ago he didn't put me on this deck but he was kind of the guy in our area that was kind of like the grand maju guy and uh I just want to say that there's a lot of times where I, I understand if you're a Grand Maju player, you probably know this play, but if you're not a Grand Maju player, a lot of the times, if you don't think you're going to win and you don't see a way to win, but you have a Grand Maju in hand, and for some reason you think your opponent's just going to attack over it, you can just set the Grand Maju, and if you have enough banished cards, there's times I've seen Chair win just by setting a Grand Maju, and then they attack into it, and your opponent's just going to lose because this ends up being like 10,000 defense, which is just insane. But yeah, that's how I just wanted to end off the video by giving him a quick shout out but i think you guys should definitely try this deck out for yourselves so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that was my take on grand maju for today's format i think the build just makes a lot of sense the way it plays all the kaiju so that you can break boards all the level eights that synergize really well with the rank eights with deep sea diva to make our level 10 synchros all of it just kind of comes together which is really nice so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys did make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week on the channel but we do a full 10 videos per week five long videos five short videos you guys are gonna get a little bit of everything so thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that spanko signing out peace